So what are typical applications, 50 horsepower or greater boilers? Uh, typically 10 to 15 years or older, compliant with safety standards, CSD1, NFPA85, single or dual fuel. The key here is that improved efficiency re results in about a 4 to 10% reduction in fuel usage. And it, as uh, Chuck indicated, you can improve your turndown. What are the different markets? And we have examples of these later in the presentation talking about how the uh, controlling has been applied. You can see hospitals, schools, office buildings, et cetera. You can read those. To the right, you see two systems, control links, which has been around for a while and which we're discussing today, and a relatively new system called Delphi, which incorporates O2 trim, which gives you another uh, 1 to 3 percent fuel efficiency. And these are the typical boiler manufacturers that uh, these things have been applied to. Now, this is the important thing. This is the exciting part, and that's the energy savings. So we're going to try to imagine a combustion curve, and I'll say up the front end, it takes a while for this thing to paint out. But uh, the important thing to remember is no, com no two combustion curves are typically identical because of the application of the burner to it and its various uh, burn rates. You do will find uh, differences between the curves. And as this thing comes up right now, you'll begin to see what the challenge is in trying to match mechanically linked systems to this combustion curve. And it's never a linear curve, right, Bob? That's correct, never linear. All right, as this thing fades from view, we'll see a mechanically linked system applied to the combustion curve. And as I said, this is the challenge. Because you're using one foot mounted actuator to drive both fuel and air, you can typically only set this thing up at one or maybe two points along the curve for maximum efficiency. This is the mechanical link system we were talking about. You can see the foot-mounted actuator down at the bottom left, driving both the, uh, that happens to be a jack shaft with secondary air sleeve control and you can see there it's also mechanically linked to the combustion uh, valve. So now as we try to match air and fuel with a single foot mounted actuator, you see we can get pretty good at one point, look through the high fire point. Now we're coming down. And you see how we're having to compromise efficiency in order to set this thing up for a good fire. And typically what's going to happen here is a guy will come in with his uh, stack analyzer, pick points along the combustion curve where he's trying to uh, eliminate things like uh, CO, maximize efficiency. But typically that's what it looks like and that's about as good as it gets. So now let's take that mechanically linked system and replace it with direct coupled actuators. And you see how all that has changed. You can see where the uh, combustion valve now, butterfly valve, is sitting with a direct coupled actuator. That's the, uh, that's right. And then if you come across there, that's for the secondary air sleeve. And then down at the bottom is the uh, air damper. And if you could look at the other side of this burner, you'd also want to see one of these things sitting on an oil metering valve. There we go. So now let's see what a curve would look like with these uh, high precision motors. You have your fuel valve and your air damper being controlled individually. And that's the 7999 controller. These blue dots you see dropping down onto the combustion curve are actually points that the uh, setup person would be establishing as he moves along the curve with his stack analyzer. And you can see we can get fairly precise uh, control. There are only a few spots along the curve 
a big additional efficiency, but because we can do that, we can eliminate those spots. We see the uh, additional points being added. And actually, you can put up to 24 points on the curve, which is where you get your very high, precise uh, control. And we'll add one more point to uh, take care of that. So you see we've fairly well aligned ourselves with the combustion curve, and we haven't even taken a look at increasing uh, turn down by lowering the minimum modulation point. That's what we're doing here. See we're light off and minimum modulation tend to be the same with mechanical ring systems. This gives us the ability to actually go below the light off point with minimum modulation. And what does this mean to to us, to you, savings, obviously, improvements in boiler emission, increased energy transfer, and improved efficiency. And you get an idea here of just the amount, graphically, of dollar savings that are available to you. However, what really is interesting is what happens over time as linkages, links slip, ball joints get loose, the opportunity for energy efficiency and for energy uh, excuse me, energy savings is significantly higher. What are the components of this system? There's a 7999 controller, which is the brains of the system. It sits on a sub-base where all the wires are pulled in. It controls up to four parallel positioning motors, a couple of actuators, and then you can set this thing up with either software or the S7999B color touchscreen display. And where does it sit? You can see where control links is. It's in the limit string upstream of the uh, programming control. So you can actually use this with any in situ programming control right now. You can see it controlling up to the four actuators. It is taking a 4 to 20 milliamp firing rate control input from the uh, pressure control you see at the top right. And now I'm going to turn it over to Chuck. Okay, Bob, thanks a lot. I really appreciate that. Great explanation. Um, what I'm going to be taking a look at here is the uh, before and after pictures of what a boiler looks like uh, with the jack shaft and as it goes through the installation process of putting a, a Honeywell control links on. So uh, the first thing we're going to take a look at here is that foot-mounted actuator that, that Bob explained in some previous slides here. Um, and off that foot-mounted actuator, we're controlling a jack shaft. Coming off, coming off the uh, right-hand side, uh, going underneath the uh, uh, air fan and motor, and um, it's got controlling the um, radial arm for the air, and it's going over to the uh, oil metering valve. Uh, the one thing that's not shown in here is the uh, gas valve that's being controlled. Okay, a uh, little bit close-up picture here of the oil metering valve. Uh, one thing to note, uh, you do have the uh, characterized oil valve that is going to be replaced, and you're going to see that in a future slide with the um, servo for the Honeywell control link system. Um, it is characterized, so that does give some um, uh, flexibility on, on the efficiency of the, of the, of the system, but the uh, servo that's going to be put on in replace of this is going to be uh, uh, a lot better. 